this morning, my God, you're great. Hallelujah. We worship you. Yes, we do, Lord. Oh. oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Our God saves. Our God saves.
today because he's been so good to me he's never failed me he's never let me down we've come to glorify him today because he's a faithful God because he's a good God he's never lost a battle he's never lost a battle that's why we're here today celebrating because we're on the winning team that's why we're excited today that's why there's people that are jumping and that are shouting. That, that's what sports teams do when they're victorious. They high five because they're on the winning team. They jump and they shout because they're on the winning team. We're on the winning side today. He's never lost a battle. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. God, you've been so good to me. This is our testimony today. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. He found me. He restored me. He renewed me. And he saved me. Anybody thankful? Is that your testimony today? We welcome you to Christian Life Center. We welcome you to a celebration today of the goodness of God. We've come to celebrate how great he is and how good he is. It just feels good to be in church today. I like what I feel in the Holy Ghost today. What a beautiful atmosphere, a powerful atmosphere, his presence. And we welcome everyone who is here today. Thank you, church family, for your faithfulness to the house of God. So good to have some of our friends here in town. Daryl and Kim Durham, we love them. Jackson, Tanner, Mason. 
We are thrilled to have our friends here in town with us again. They've been here a few times and they look really good here. And it is really good to have Sister Angie home today. And she's home today because God is really good and God has touched Brother Ferris and he's been in service in the last week or two and we thank God for that, for his healing touch, for his keeping power. Hey Amen. We thank God for that today and I want to I want to welcome all of our guests who are here. Can we, can we let our guests know today how thankful we are that they've come to worship with us here at CLC. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. Any first time guests who are here today, we'd love to meet you after service out in the foyer to the right. We have a connection room and any of our staff can help guide you toward that room. And uh, my wife and I would love to meet you following our service. I want to thank you CLC for your sacrificial investment the cause of the kingdom through our offering this past week. I believe it's just the beginning of the miracle that God is working over. $53,000 has already come in toward the work of God here at CLC. Over 11 additional thousand dollars that have been pledged. And I know that, that God is going to continue to provide for the needs that we have so that we can fulfill his purpose in the kingdom. And that's what it's all about. And so we thank you for that. We're going to take our needs before the Lord right now. And there's many many needs within our congregation you'll see names on the screen that are listed there and others that i want to mention especially brother bill smith we're praying for god to touch him needs healing in his body deborah clark is in the hospital we're praying today that god would minister healing right where she is brother bob and sister linda walters have had a, a challenging week and even this morning and we we want to pray for them and lift them up in Jesus' name, continue to pray for Sister Ruby Fowler, just believing for continued healing and strength for her. Uh, multiple families today are dealing with the flu and other uh, illness that they're, they're dealing with. We also want to pray uh, especially today for the family of Tate Eric. If you have not heard, uh, a young man who attended CLC for many years who passed away last night in an accident, and we want to pray for the, the Eric family, for his wife, Tara, that God would strengthen and comfort them during this time, this tragic loss, lift them up. Also remember, Brother Larry Gleckler has gone to be with his father. Uh, his father's passing is, is imminent. They've just given him days. And so we wanna pray for Brother Larry, his family. God is able to provide peace that passes our understanding, that passes our ability to, to try to figure it all out because we know that God is in control and we can trust him. If you have a need today that you'd like to mention to the Lord, would you just lift a hand right now and just indicate that to God that you've got a situation that you need him to handle right now? Why don't you get a hold of somebody's hand who's next to you right, right there and just agree with somebody right now. We're just going to agree together and believe that God is going to minister across this sanctuary. Lord, we come before you today so grateful for your presence and for the privilege that we have to call upon you right now. God, you hear and you answer our prayers. This is more than a formality today, more than just an item on the agenda, but we truly believe that you hear the cry of your people and you're responding right now to needs. And you understand and you feel, God, those infirmities that we deal with because you felt those same infirmities and you understand so we can come boldly before your throne of grace and find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. I pray that you would reach into this sanctuary right now. God, that you would strengthen, that you would heal, that you would provide right now. God, that you would deliver today. And you are the great I am. You are our healer and our savior, our provider, the promise keeper, the way maker. And we look to you right now, Jesus. And we put our hope and our confidence in you. We thank you for your provision right now, God. I feel him ministering right now, even as we pray. I believe that God God is working on our behalf. He's coming to this service right now to meet your need. If you would present that to him in faith, I believe he's working right now. In the name of Jesus, we claim that provision. In the name of Jesus, we claim that healing right now. And we thank you for it. Let's give him praise and give him thanks together right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't you shake someone's hand as you move back to your seats and if you'll remain standing our ushers are 
making their way right now as we prepare to give unto God. And as they are coming, we want to say, we encourage you to stop out by the Information Center after service. If you did not receive our weekly connect, this outlines all the announcements and uh, various things that are going on around CLC. So make sure you pick up a weekly connect. But a couple very important uh, things that we do want to announce. After service has concluded today down in our Family Life Center, uh, there is a lunch that is uh, being prepared, a wonderful lunch for uh, raising funds for our J Crew, our tribe youth. Uh, they're raising funds all throughout the summer up until the time of uh, Youth Congress. And so if you would like to come and be part of that, we encourage you to stop down at the uh, Family Life Center. It's going to be a great time of fellowship, great food that is being prepared. Also, they are doing our annual Easter basket auction. And if you want to be part of that, if you would like to donate and uh, maybe do a basket up, there is a sign up at the Information Center. If you'll stop out there and help them out, this is a great fundraiser each and every year. And uh, we encourage you to be looking forward to that. But again, pick up a weekly connect. It'll keep you connected to all the things here at CLC. It's time for us to get ready and to give an offering to God. And we want to say, uh, as Pastor Enzi had already said, uh, thank you to everybody that is faithfully supporting the work in the kingdom of God. Uh, you can continue to turn in a uh, sacrificial offering if you'd like to. Just make sure it's noted on your envelope. But this is a time that we receive our tithing and our offering. We, we give it back to God cheerfully. We give it back to God willfully. And we know that God takes and multiplies and blesses that and the kingdom of God. So we want to challenge you to continue to support God's work and we're going to believe God is going to bless that. So church, it's time to bring an offering back with great joy. Give it to God's kingdom. You can give in this offering this morning. Text to give. You can go on the website. Many ways that you can do that. But let's be faithful in our support. Why don't we pray together then our ushers will receive the offering. Lord, we thank you this morning that we can come and we can give. As we give to your kingdom, we know that you're going to bless what is given. You're going to multiply that. Lord, you're going to bless the giver that gives out of a cheerful heart. Today we do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you as you give. can't stay here asleep to how you're moving I can't stay here complacent anymore and I can't stay here my heart is full of longing and I can't stay here I know what I'm made for you're breathing new into dry bones I hear the echo the sound of heaven's song your spirit's calling me I know it's time to go but I can't stay here anymore
just get lost in his presence for a minute, my God. Oh, I'm ready, Lord, for where you're calling me to be. Oh, for what you want me to be, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You haven't come rushing, Lord, in this place, God. Stay there for a minute, Lord. Heaven come rushing. Heaven, heaven come rushing. Heaven, heaven come rushing. Rushing rush to our hearts and to our praise. Heaven we come sing, rushing. Lord, heaven come rushing. Heaven come rushing. Oh, heaven come rushing. Heaven come rushing. Heaven come rushing. We want more of you. We need more of you. Heaven come rushing. Heaven come rushing. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. Oh, when you walk into this room, Jesus, we magnify you. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, your feet and worship you. Oh, we worship you. We love you and we'll never stop. Can't live without you, Jesus. get enough all this is for you Jesus when you walk into the room our 
darkness starts to vanish and every hopeless situation ceases to exist is when you walk into the room the dead began to rise because there is resurrection life and all you do Every hopeless situation Oh, it ceases to exist Cause when you walk into the oh, room the dead begin to rise The dead begin to rise There is resurrection life And all you do Oh, and we love you We love you And we'll never stop And we'll never stop Can't live I give it all. 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 I give it all.
ahead and give him. Go ahead and give him all your praise right now. Go ahead and give him all of your worship. Because he's been faithful. Because he's seen you through. Oh, we give you all. We surrender all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give ourselves to you, Jesus. Come on, with, with hands lifted right now, with hearts open to him, would you, would you just surrender yourself to him? Would you just give it all to him? Maybe you feel like you don't have a lot to give today. Maybe, maybe it seems like pain or frustrations or disappointments are all you have to give him today. That's okay. Just give him what you have right now. Just go ahead and surrender it all to him. God, I give myself to you. I give myself to you today, Jesus. He's not looking for perfection. He's just looking for honesty and transparency that says, God, here I am with all of my failures, with my shortcomings. God, I give myself to you right now. I don't worship you today, Lord, because there's anything good about me. I worship you because you are good. I don't worship today because I'm perfect. I worship because you are perfect and you are worthy of all my praise. And God, you have been so faithful. You have seen me through every trial. You've seen me through every valley. You've seen me beyond every mountain that stood in my way. So I give you all today. I give you all my praise. I give you all my worship today. I give you all of me today, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's walked into this room today. He's walked into this room today, and I believe he has exactly what you have need of right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank you, Jesus, for your holy presence, for your anointing in this place today. Hallelujah. Thankful that we can experience him. There is a, a very deep, tangible manifestation of his presence in this place right now. I believe God desires to speak to us. He, he wants to communicate some things to us today. I'm thankful he still speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word, through his spirit, through the preaching of his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going deeper in 2019. We're strengthening the stakes. We're lengthening the cords. God is taking us somewhere. We're on a journey with him, and he is leading us and directing us. As we prepare to go to the word of the Lord, I, I want to, to mention one announcement that's on your weekly connect, but it's coming up in a few weeks. It's the family ministry weekend, a very important weekend for our church. And I encourage you to make plans to be part of this weekend. The Friday evening sessions are just for married couples. There's nothing planned for children, for youth, young adults, singles, just for married couples Friday night. There will be a meal and a couple of sessions. And then Saturday, we have sessions designed for every age group. Every individual in the church is invited for Saturday. Registration is available through our website or through our CLC app. It's very easy to register. We registered our family this morning and it took about 60 seconds. So it's very easy to do. If you need help with that, you can see someone at the Information Center, see uh, Brother JP, Sister Melissa, our family pastor who are helping us to, to plan uh, this weekend. Going to be a very important, very special time. We'll have sessions on Saturday for the family. We'll have a time of fellowship Saturday evening at a local park in the area. And then on that Sunday, Brother JP, our family pastor, will be, will be preaching to us to wrap up our family ministry weekend. Our families are important. Our families are important. No matter what the dynamics are of your family, you are important to CLC, and we are all part of this family. Amen. We're all part of the family of God, and the CLC family is a very special family to be part of, and so I encourage you to make plans to be with us for that weekend. And uh, later today, our CLC Brownsville daughter work will be launching weekly services and our prayers are with brother Amani, sister Shanae as we launch our weekly services very very exciting time for clc that service is at 5 p.m for those that have talked to brother Amani and you're scheduled and planning on being there 
with us. Today, we continue with part three of our series on the characteristics of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. The word disciple and the word discipline have the same root word. It requires discipline in order to become a disciple. It's a process. Discipleship requires time. It requires commitment. You know, maturity takes time. You have to live a little bit, experience some things to mature. Now, time alone does not equal maturity. Maturity requires time along with intentional, wise decisions. So we continue the discipleship journey today. Part one, we talked about disciple is first a Christian. Part two, a disciple loves other disciples. And now for part three, we turn to John chapter 14. Jesus has made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The disciples have gathered with him in the upper room to celebrate the Passover. And he foretells his death and the kind of death that he would die. He washes the disciples' feet. He discloses his forthcoming betrayal by Judas and he predicts Peter's denial. He follows all of that by saying, let not your hearts be troubled. Easy for him to say at that moment. He knew the end of the story. They didn't. They weren't sure what was going to happen after the cross, but he comforted them with those words, let not your heart be troubled. And in John chapter 14, verse number 15, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I'll ask the Father and he will give you another advocate or a comforter who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Jesus reveals to them, I, I'm not sending somebody else. There, there's not another person of the Godhead that's, that's coming. Jesus revealed to them, I, I'm the comforter. I'm the one that's with you now, but I'm going to be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me since I live, you also will live. When I'm raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me and because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Verse 23. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the father who sent me. A true disciple of Jesus Christ will be obedient to his commandments. Obedience is not optional. It's really the most important issue in the Bible our obedience to his word. He said, if you love me, your, your love for me will be manifest through your obedience to my word. It's a covenant relationship that is based upon love. It's based upon love that is demonstrated through obedience and submission. So I want to preach to you today from this subject, a disciple is obedient. A disciple is obedient. I want us to pray right now. I, I want us to pray for courage today to be obedient. I'm, I'm going to preach until you obey the Holy Ghost. I'm going to preach until you just obey what you feel God is directing you and leading you to do. Whatever that is right now in this moment in this service, I'm going to preach until you respond in faith and with love for God through your obedience. I want us to pray for that right now, for a renewed commitment to the Word of God, to, to truly be disciples of Jesus Christ, to be in a covenant relationship with Him. Would you pray with me right now? God, we are coming before you so thankful for your presence that we feel in this place. God, thank you for making yourself known in this sanctuary today. I thank you for your Word, and I pray that you would speak to us through your Word and through your spirit. I pray for courage today to obey. I pray for deeper commitment today. God, that our obedience would be motivated by a love for you, by a covenant relationship with you, that you would challenge us today, God, to live a life of obedience. I desire to be your disciple. Help me, God.
God to live in obedience to your word, to express my love for you by the things that I do and the words that I say, the life that I live. I want to be pleasing to you. I want to bring you glory and honor in the things that I do and that I'm praying today. God, that you would move us, that you would motivate us and stir us to a greater level of obedience to your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Would you give him praise and thanks right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. I begin this message today with a public service announcement. On behalf of the Heath Police Department, the Newark Police Department, the Licking County Sheriff's Department, and the Ohio State Highway Patrol. We have a few of those among us. I'm not sure if they're here today. I make this public service announcement. Not obeying the law is hazardous to your health. Not obeying the law is hazardous to your health. I know there's some bizarre laws out there that were created for some random crazy reasons that we've long forgotten now. But for the most part, laws were created and they exist for a very good reason. Even if we don't understand them, even if we don't appreciate them, even if we don't like them, they were created for our protection and for our safety. Laws were created for our good. And obedience to those laws matter. There's some new drivers right now in this section that just need to hear me right now. There's some parents that are, that are thanking me right now that, that obedience to the law, it matters. To fail to obey the law places your life in danger, potentially places the lives of others in danger. Laws are established for our good. There are established speed limits on our roadways for a reason. Traffic studies are conducted to determine speed limits. Factors are considered like the type of road, whether it's a highway or road conditions, population density, environment, whether it's residential or rural, the presence of stoplights, cross traffic, is access controlled with on and off ramps. All of those things and factors are considered and a speed limit is set for maximum safety and efficiency. And I try to be obedient. Just a moment of transparency here. I, I try to be obedient to those, those laws. The speed limit, though, is, is, is not the only reason that I don't go 100 miles an hour on Linville Road. The law alone is, is not the only reason that I don't do that. The law is a factor, yes, but ultimately I place value on my life and on the lives of of others so much so that that obedience to the law is a natural result of that value that I've developed I value my life law says we're required to wear seat belts statistics say that seat belts reduce the risk of fatal injury in an accident by 45 percent reduce the risk of moderate to critical injury by 50 percent people not wearing a seat belt are 30 times more likely to be ejected from a vehicle in an accident Three out of four people who are ejected from a vehicle during an accident will die from their injuries. Now, I, I, am, I am very faithful in wearing my seatbelt. But I, I don't wear my seatbelt because it's the law. I, I, I don't wear my seatbelt because I like the feel of that material across my chest. It's not where I wear, why I wear my seatbelt. I don't wear my seatbelt because... It's the law. The law is certainly a factor. I don't want to get a, a ticket for not wearing my, my seatbelt, but that's, that's not the most important factor. I, I, I used to not wear my seatbelt very often. There was a time when I, I, I didn't wear it very often, but then I got married and I started having children and I started to value my life and my wife and my children and I valued being there for them. I had a revelation. If I value them, then I will wear that seatbelt, not because it's the law, but because of a relationship. Because I love life and I love my family. Therefore, that love compels me to do something that I don't necessarily want to do. I don't do it because it feels good. It's not convenient. I don't like the fact that it wrinkles my dress shirt. 
but it provides something for me. My obedience to that law provides a measure of protection and security. And I would rather be uncomfortable and have a wrinkled shirt than to put my life and others' lives in harm's way because of my disobedience. Obedience to the law is not a matter of preference. It is a matter of life and death. If this is true in the natural, it is certainly true in the spiritual the word of God makes it so very clear. We are blessed when we are obedient and we are cursed when we are disobedient. I encourage you to take some time to read Deuteronomy chapters 28 through 30 in their entirety. It is challenging. It's inspiring. It's convicting. And as God talks to us about obedience and disobedience and the consequences of those actions, and I'm going to read just a few passages out of those chapters. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. If you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So many promises in the word of God are conditional. They are dependent upon our actions and our obedience. God said, if you obey, there are some promises and there are some blessings that are going to come your way because there's some spiritual principles that simply work and obedience produces blessing. And he said, you're going to be blessed in the city, in the field, blessed when you come in, when you go out, you're going to be fruitful and prosperous. Your enemies will be defeated. You'll be the head and not the tail. You'll go up and not down if you obey my commandments. And I don't know about you, but I want that kind of blessing. I want that kind of promise. I want that kind of provision. And God said, it's very simple. All you have to do is obey my word and if you'll be obedient to me these promises and blessings are yours but he didn't stop there he said there's some things that'll happen if you're not obedient and verse 15 says if you don't obey the voice of the lord your god or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that i command you today then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you he said you'll be cursed in the city and in the field Cursed when you come in and when you go out. Your fruitfulness and provision will be cursed. You'll be defeated by your enemies. The heavens will be bronze and the earth iron. Your sons and your daughters, yes, the next generation will be affected and by your disobedience. They'll become slaves and you shall be the tail and not the head. He said, I've got a promise for you that's also related to your disobedience. That if you don't obey... God's making a promise to us. These are the things that you're going to experience. Deuteronomy chapter 29, God then renews his covenant with Israel. A covenant is simply an agreement between two parties. It includes rights and provisions, blessings and promises that are related to the fulfillment of that agreement within that covenant relationship. Those blessings and promises are based upon upholding the agreed upon terms of the covenant. And the motivation for Israel was not intended to be obedience to the law or even the potential for blessings or curses. And those should have been second secondary motivations. The primary motivation was to be a covenant relationship with God. It was supposed to be obedience and motivated by love, but that's not how the story turns out because Israel found themselves simply trying to fulfill the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. And they found themselves ultimately in defeat and in bondage. Obedience must be motivated by love. And so God concludes with this final challenge in Deuteronomy chapter 30. This is a little bit of a lengthy reading, but I want you to hear the, the promise and the challenge of the Spirit today. God said, for this commandment that I command you today, it's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, and neither is it far off. It's not beyond your ability. It's not a matter of ability. It's a matter of priority. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. He said, it's not a matter of knowledge and it's not a matter of ability he said you know it it's in your mouth and it's in your heart and you have the ability to do it it is simply a matter of obedience so verse 15 he said see i've set before you today life and good death 
and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments, his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you're going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. You see, obedience is a matter of life and death. God said, obey and choose life and good or disobey and choose death death and evil. It is your choice today. I feel the spirit of God reaching into this sanctuary right now, challenging us to elevate our level of obedience. I wonder if somebody right now would just take a moment. I want to just pause in the middle of this message and I want to give you an opportunity to hear from the voice of God. I can preach and I can speak and I can do my best to communicate what I feel like God has placed in my spirit. But the spirit of God is a better preacher than I am. And I believe even right now the Holy Ghost is constraining us and compelling us to be obedient to the word of God and to the voice of God. I want us to take a moment right now. Would you just stretch your hands toward heaven and would you open your heart today? I'm preaching until somebody hears the voice of God and makes a decision. I'm going to be obedient to to his voice. I'm going to be obedient to his word, even if I don't like it, even if it's not comfortable, even if I don't feel it, I'm going to be obedient to, to his word. You have a choice today. There are options before you, life and death, good and evil, and the choice is yours. What decision are you going to make today? No decision is still a decision today. He said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. There are, there, there's a blessing in obedience today. Jesus said, if you love me and you obey my commandments, I'm going to give you the comforter who's going to dwell with you. I'll never leave you and forsake you. I will lead and guide you into all truth. You see, obedience provides comfort and protection. It provides relationship and it provides revelation. There is a blessing in obedience, but there is also a curse in disobedience. Paul would tell the church in Thessalonica, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, he said, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance, on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. I would not be doing my job today as your pastor and I would not be fulfilling my responsibility as a man of God and as his spokesperson today if I did not inform you that there is also a curse when it comes to disobedience. That those who do not know him and those who do not obey him that there is coming a judgment. I wish I could tell you today that it was not so. I wish I could tell you today that there was no judgment, that we could live any way that we wanted to live and do anything that we wanted to do and there would be no consequences and there would be no judgment. But I would not be honest with you. I wouldn't be honest with myself or the word of God if I was to share some kind of gospel with you today that had no consequences for disobedience, that had no requirements and no expectations There is a curse when it comes to disobedience. He said, for those who don't know God and don't obey him, love and obey. Relationship and obedience are connected and there's protection in obedience. There's safety in obedience. We do have an adversary today. We have an enemy. The Bible says that he is like a roaring lion who goes about seeking whom he may devour. But I would submit to you today that his roar is a whole lot worse than his bite. 
Satan is not God's opposite. For him to be God's opposite would mean that he is God's equal and he is not God's equal. God has all power in heaven and in earth. Satan does not. Satan is not all powerful like God is. And any power that Satan has is power that has been given to him. And not necessarily by God, but we surrender power and authority to that enemy through disobedience. He has no power over us, but he is deceitful and he is wise concerning our weaknesses and he will take advantage of us when we are disobedient to the word of God. We give a foothold to the devil. We open the door to an attack from our adversary through disobedience. See, it takes, it takes true power to create and to make new. God is a creator. It takes very little power to destroy, to tear down. The enemy has a very clearly defined purpose to steal, to kill, and destroy. He has no power and no authority over your life unless you surrender it to him. And through disobedience, and we remove that protective covering and we surrender power and authority to the enemy. Listen to what Paul would say in Ephesians chapter two. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now is at work in the sons of disobedience, and among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. He said that at that time, we were the sons or the children of disobedience. And when we allowed the passions of our flesh to carry out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were children of wrath. And to be the children of something or of someone indicates the source of or the dependence upon. We have a choice today. We can be the children of God or we can be the children of disobedience. And it determines who our source or our inspiration is and determines who we we are dependent upon uh, through obedience and uh, based on a love relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, we have the opportunity for protection. Uh, we have the opportunity to have power over our adversary. We have power over temptation. We have power over sin uh, through our obedience. But through disobedience, we remove that protection and we surrender that authority to the enemy. We open the door to deception and compromise. We're subject to and controlled by the passions of the flesh because we have yielded that control through disobedience. You know, obedience to the word of God fixes a whole lot of problems. Obedience to the word of God fixes a whole lot of issues and challenges and things that we deal with in our life. And we like to blame a lot of things on the devil. But the fact of the matter is that he has no authority and no power unless we yield that to him through our disobedience. But when we obey the word of God, there is not a devil in hell. There is not a demonic force that can come against the children of God who are yielded to him through obedience who love him and express that love for him through obedience and submission. There is nothing the enemy can do against your family. There is nothing the enemy can do to, to try to, to cause you to doubt or fear when you are submitted to God through obedience that is motivated by love. Just being obedient, just saying yes to God, no matter the conditions or qualifications, and not justifying sin or making excuses, just simple obedience. We could just start with the Ten Commandments. That's a good place to start obeying. Don't have any of the gods before me, having the right priorities and values. Don't, don't make any idols that you worship. What is an idol? It's simply something that you can't say no to that you've yielded yourself to, if you can't say no to something in your life, that it has that much control and influence in you, it's become an idol. If it takes precedence over your relationship with God, it's become an idol. Don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Certainly don't curse using his name. But I would say, let's not get so comfortable just calling out the name of Jesus and that we're casual about it and we express that name with very little faith or belief that something's gonna happen when we speak that name. Don't speak the name of the Lord in vain, but speak it in faith. Speak it believing that when you call in the name of Jesus that something's gonna happen. 
that heaven's going to be moved, that hell will shake and tremble at the name of Jesus. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Just be faithful to God. Honor your father and mother. Honor our elders. Appreciate our heritage. Don't murder physically or verbally or on social media. Don't assassinate somebody's character. Don't try to justify it by saying you just want to pray for them. So you're sharing that need with your neighbor. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery or fornication. Honor God in your relationships. Don't steal. Don't steal from God. Don't steal from your neighbor. Don't steal from your job. Don't steal for the government. It's a good word right now at tax season time. <laughs> Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's. But take advantage of every loophole and option that you can find to pay as little taxes as possible. <laughs> Just stay legal. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. Don't, don't lie. Just tell the truth. Just speak the truth. Don't covet. Don't, don't desire something that's not yours. Sister Enzi said something recently. We were speaking at a, a marriage retreat where she said comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself among yourselves. The Bible says that's not wise. Don't covet what somebody else has. Things, possessions, relationship, job, positions in the church, whatever it is, don't covet. Just obey, just obey. See, the law is for our good, it's for our protection physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, even financially. Obedience pays off. Just think about how much money you're saving by living your life for God. All the things you could be spending it on out there in the world. I mean, drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and gambling and, and it pays to live for God. It saves you some money by living for God, not, not, not spending it on all of those things. You can spend it on your family and invest it in the kingdom of God, living a modest life, not trying to keep up with the Joneses. It pays to live for God. Obedience is the biggest issue in the Bible. Listen to what happens in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Through his prophet Samuel, God commands King Saul to completely destroy the Amalekite nation, the people, the livestock, everything. And in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 7, the Bible says, Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Saul and his men spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality according to their value system, not God's. He was not obedient to the command of God. And verse number 13 says, when Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I've carried out the Lord's command. How delusional and deceived he was. Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle I hear, Samuel demanded. Saul says, it's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted, but they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We've destroyed everything else. Self-justification for disobedience always leads to self-destruction. Verse number 18. The Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they're all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep and goats, cattle and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. 
And submission is better than the offering of the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice is important. I would submit to you today that it is even necessary, but obedience is better. Obedience is better. Jesus did not say, if you love me, offer a sacrifice. But he said, if you love me, obey my commandments. God doesn't need our sacrifice. He doesn't need our worship. He he doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our talents and our abilities that sometimes we will call sacrifice when we submit that to God in service of his kingdom. But he does need our obedience and all of those other things will come and all of those other things will follow. He needs our obedience because it's possible to sacrifice without obedience. It's possible to worship in the house of God without being obedient. Sacrifice without obedience will will create the false impression that God owes us something, that God is in debt to us. That's sacrifice without obedience. Jesus quoted the prophet Isaiah and he said, these people honor me with their lips but their ears are far from me. It's possible to sacrifice without being obedient. Sacrifice is an external expression, but obedience motivated by love. It is eternal. It's a matter of the heart. It is an expression of trust that is based upon a relationship with Jesus Christ. We do not follow and are not obedient to the word of God just to avoid judgment. We're not obedient to the word of God just to follow the letter of the law, but it must be motivated by love, by a covenant covenant relationship with Jesus Christ that says, I want to love him. I desire to serve him. I want to live my life for him. The ultimate expression of obedience based on love is submission. It is possible to obey without being submitted, but obedience motivated by love will lead us to ultimate submission. Submission is obedience when you don't understand and when you don't even agree. That's submission. Submission is obedience when it doesn't make any sense to you. Submission is obedience when it seems like there's going to be some consequences that are not comfortable. Obedience is more important than understanding. Obedience is more important than agreement. When you think about agreement and and unity in an organizational sense, unity is not necessarily everybody agreeing. Unity is not everybody saying the exact same thing, but it is submission to a common cause and submission to authority in spite of disagreements. Unity says, I'm going to submit to the greater cause that I am part of. Submission is obedience and that is not predicated on feelings or on consequences. It is obedience when we don't feel like it and even when it will cost us something. That's submission. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 talking about his feelings first Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 3 but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment yea I judge not mine own self for I know nothing by myself yet am I not hereby justified but he that judgeth me is the Lord I read that in the King James and I I didn't really understand exactly what it was saying so we're going to read a different translation the NIV says this, I care very little, I, I care very little if I'm judged by you or by, even by a human court. Indeed, I don't even judge myself whether I'm right or wrong. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It's the Lord who judges me. But that, that's not my personal conviction. I, I, I don't feel convicted about that. I know the Bible says it. I know pastor preaches it, but I, I, that's, that's not my personal conviction. That's not my personal belief. Paul said, 
I'm not worried about being judged by you or even a human court. I don't judge myself because even if my conscience is clear and even if I'm not convicted about something, it doesn't make me innocent. It doesn't make me right. And it is the Lord who judges me. And ultimately, it is the word of God in the end that we are all going to be judged by. We're not judged by our intentions. We're going to be judged by our obedience. We're not going to be judged by our convictions and following our own man-made convictions. We're going to be judged by the word of God. I believe you need to have personal convictions. But when your convictions are at a lower level than the word of God declares, guess what? We got to rearrange our priorities and we got to adjust our convictions because we won't be judged by our own convictions. We won't be judged by our own preferences. We will be judged by the word of God. Your authority to be an overcomer, to be victorious is based on your submission to authority. A centurion came to Jesus. His servant was sick and he said, Jesus, I understand authority. I want you to just say the word. Luke chapter seven, verse eight, he said, I'm a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and and he does it. He said, I understand authority. I understand in order to have authority, I have to be under authority. Through obedience, we submit ourselves to the authority of God so that we have authority and power and the ability to overcome the adversary, to overcome temptations, to overcome sin. That is the ultimate place of of, of obedience and it is a place of submission that is motivated by love submission doesn't mean agreement in fact we don't really even have submission unless there's disagreement if you agree with what's being commanded it's called agreement but when there's a disagreement And my flesh wants something else. But the word of God says I need to do this and I need to obey. Then I submit myself to the word of God. And there is power and there is authority in that submission. You don't have a pastor just because you attend a church. You have a pastor. When pastor says, I don't think you need to do that. I don't think you need to go there. I don't think you need to be in that relationship. And even when you disagree, you say, okay, pastor. Okay, pastor, I I, I don't agree with it, but I'm gonna submit to the authority that God has placed in my life. That's when you really have a pastor. When you still show up at church and you, you keep on worshiping and you keep on giving and you keep on serving, even when there is disagreement, that is submission to authority that gives us authority. And when we are not submitted to authority, then we lose the authority, the power that we have. I won't take the time to go through them, but there are practical applications to the word of God. We find it in Malachi chapter three when it comes to obedience with our finances and tithes and offerings that God said, when you are obedient, it is going to produce blessing and I'm gonna rebuke the devourer. There are some blessings that come with obedience. First Corinthians chapter 11, God outlines spiritual authority and said submission to that spiritual authority provides power, that there is glory and power on the head of the woman when she is submitted to God godly authority. There is something about submission that gives us authority and protection, the power that God desires for us to have to be victorious in him. It's about perspective, really. We we can look at the word of God and, and see it as restricting our lifestyle, or we can look at the word of God and see it as protection from God. You can look at it as a prison that keeps you in, or it's protection that keeps the enemy out. I'm talking about the difference in perspective when it comes to obedience. We have to know what the word of God says if we're going to be obedient to his word. Ignorance is not going to be a viable excuse on the day of judgment. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're not, they're not excused for a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge leads to a lack of obedience. But I, I really don't believe today that a lack of obedience or lack of knowledge is our, is our problem. It's a lack of obedience. We're educated beyond our level of obedience. We know more than we're faithful to. You know, the easiest way to disobey is to just do nothing. 
just do nothing. James chapter four says, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Unfortunately, obedience is not something that comes naturally to us. We're not born with an inclination to obey. It's something that we have to learn. It's something that we have to be taught Jesus even Jesus in his humanity had to learn obedience Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 says speaking of Jesus though he was a son he learned obedience through what he suffered so don't curse everything that causes suffering because it teaches us some things Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered pain is a great motivator Pain is a great teacher. C.S. Lewis said this, pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience, but he shouts to us in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Pain is a great teacher. When Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, he said this, pray this way. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is the will of God done in heaven? How is the will of God done? I imagine when, when Jesus gives a command to one of those angels, they probably don't question if he's really thought it all the way through. They probably don't question if that's really the right thing to do. I have a feeling that the will of God is done in heaven immediately. With, with, without question or without qualification, the will of God is done exactly as God commands it. Jesus said, pray this way, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I challenge you today to pray this way. Make it personal. God, I want your will to be done in me just like it is in heaven. I want your will to be accomplished in me just like it is in heaven. I want to be obedient just like obedience is modeled in heaven. God, help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to hear the voice of the spirit and to be obedient. No matter what you're calling me to do, no matter what your word is challenging me to do, God, help me to be obedient to your word. Obedience outside of relationship is nothing more than legalism. It's just following laws and rules and regulations. But obedience within the context of relationship is manifest as love coming to a close right now I felt a challenge of the Holy Ghost today for us to elevate our level of obedience if we're going to be disciples of Jesus Christ we're going to be obedient to his word he said if you love me you got to keep my commandments you have to obey my commandments legalism is just obeying to be saved but love is obeying because I'm saved. It's about motivation. It's about relationship. If you love me, keep my commandments. Not because you have to, because you get to. In the marriage covenant, I'm not faithful to my wife just because there's a piece of paper that says we're married. I'm not faithful to my wife just because there's something in the Bible that says I don't need to commit adultery, but I'm faithful to her because it's motivated out of love. There's something in me that says I want to please her. I want to protect her. I want to protect my marriage and there's something about that obedience that is evidenced through love that submission that is evidenced through love that causes protection because it's a principle from the word of God obedience through submission provides protection Paul would quote the prophet in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 and say come out from among them and be separate says the Lord don't touch the unclean thing I will receive you and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. He said, be separate, be, be obedient, not for the sake of being different from the world, but for the sake of relationship. I want to be your father. I want you to be my child. It, 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 it's impossible to be in covenant when there is no obedience, but you will never continue in obedience unless your motivation is love. I want you to stand with me today. There's coming a day that we're all going to stand before him. And I want to hear him say the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
I want, I want to hear those words one day when it's all said and done, when my life ends, when this life comes to an end. I want to hear those words from my Savior, from my Lord, from my Master. Well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. But in order for us to hear those words, well done, we're going to have to do something well. We're going to have to be obedient and we're going to have to be good and faithful to something if we're going to hear those words. If there are no expectations, we cannot be faithful. If there are no instructions, then we cannot do well. But submission to his word, obedience to his word is how we're going to hear those words one day. Doing the will of God and being faithful to his word. I want you to close your eyes with me right now all over the sanctuary. John chapter 2 records the very first miracle of Jesus. There was a need at the wedding of Cana. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, give this, gives the servants one of the most simple but profound commandments in all of the Bible. The mother of Jesus says to those servants, whatever Jesus tells you to do, I want you to do it. Whatever Jesus commands you to do, I want you to do it. Just obey. Everything is going to be okay if you will just obey. Everything is going to be all right, no matter what it looks like, no matter how crazy it sounds, no matter the consequences, just simple obedience, obedience that is motivated by love. If you love me, keep my commandments. What is it that God is speaking to you right now? I challenge you to open your heart to him. I challenge you to give God opportunity to speak into your spirit right now. I know we don't have any music and, and the, the singers are not singing and it may be a little bit uncomfortable right now I recognize that but sometimes we can hide behind the song and we can hide behind the music but I I want us to get very honest and transparent with God right now what is it that he is speaking into your spirit and what is it that God is calling you to do is he dealing with you concerning some area in your life where you need greater commitment to a greater obedience and it's for your good today I've tried to communicate to you that we have some options that are before us and that we can choose life and good and, or we can choose death and evil. The options are before us every single individual under the sound of my voice today. We have a decision to make. And we have a choice to make right now before us are two options. We're going to choose obedience or we're going to choose disobedience. We're going to choose blessing or we're going to choose cursing. We're going to choose life or we'll choose death. We'll choose good or we'll choose evil. What is it? that God is speaking into your spirit right now. I want you to be very honest with him. I want you to open your heart to him. And I want you to ask him very honestly, God, is there something that I need to do? Is there something you desire for me to do? Is there some area in my life where I need greater obedience? And God, is there an area in my life that I haven't been faithful to you? The spirit of God is reaching him and he's calling right now. He's searching up and down the rows of every every pew and he's asking the question right now what choice are you going to make what decision are you going to make today I'm challenging you right now in the Holy Ghost I'm challenging you today to respond to the voice of the spirit to answer the call of the spirit right now he's calling us to obey motivated by a love for him I don't have to do this I get to do this I get to live for him I get to serve for him because he loved me and he died for me and he gave his life for me he shed his blood for me and that blood it purchased my salvation and it made it available to me today so that I can enter into a covenant relationship with him and I love him so much that I'm willing to do whatever he asked me to do I love him so much that I'm willing to obey his word even when it's uncomfortable even when I don't agree with it even when there may be some consequences I'm not really looking forward to but God I'm going to be obedient to your word even if it will require some pain and some suffering that I have to do God teach me obedience and teach me to obey and teach me to be faithful to your word the spirit of God is reaching and he's calling right now he's looking for some disciples and he's looking for somebody who would be faithful to him through obedience come on you're wondering why 
why your family's been under attack. You're wondering why you're struggling with that temptation. Is there some area in your life where you need to be more faithful in obedience? You're, you're wondering today why things are just seems to always be difficult and challenging and, and trials and you can't ever get out of it. Is there some area of your life where you need to be faithful? Husband, father, man of the house, head of the household, I'm challenging you right now. I'm challenging you to increase your level of obedience and submission to the word of God and to the authority that he has placed in your life. Don't allow your disobedience to open that door of the enemy to attack your wife and your family. There's protection in obedience. There's blessing in obedience. There's authority in obedience. I challenge you right now to open your mouth and to lift up your voice and to cry out to God right now with your commitment. I'm challenging you right now to open your heart and cry out to God with a commitment to him, a renewed commitment. I'm going to be obedient to your word. I'm going to be obedient to the spiritual authority in my life because I want to be blessed. I want my family to prosper. I want you to rebuke the devourer. I want you to protect me from the things that would try to destroy me. I want you to protect my family from the things that would try to destroy my relationship with my wife and would try to destroy my children. God, I want your protection. I want that covering. I want that authority to be victorious. I want that authority to be an overcomer. I want that authority that protects me and keeps me. God, I'm making this commitment today. I'm going to be obedient to your word. God, whatever you ask me to do, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you command me to do, I'm going to do it. These altars are open today. You've got an opportunity. You've got a choice right now. You've got a choice today. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? In the next few moments of this altar service, I believe that your response will indicate your choice. What are you going to choose today? What decision are you making right now that's going to affect your relationships, that's going to affect your family? I challenge every father, every husband right now to lead your family in holiness and in righteousness and in obedience and submission to God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Spirit is compelling us right now. The Spirit is compelling us. The Spirit is drawing right now. The Holy Ghost is talking. If you would open your ear, if you would hear the voice of the Spirit right now, God is drawing and God is speaking. Oh, God, help me. God, search me and know me. Know my heart, oh, God. Search me, God. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, what is it that you want me to do? I challenge you right now. What is the spirit asking you to do? What is the word of God compelling you to do? If you'll be obedient, everything's going to be okay. If you'll, if you'll be obedient, I promise you it's going to work out. If you just do what Jesus is telling you to do right now, it's going to be okay. He's going to make a way. He's going to provide. He will rebuke the devourer that's been attacking your family. If you'll just make up your mind today, we are going to be obedient. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be obedient to his word. We're going to be obedient to that challenge of the spirit right now.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask everybody right now to find a place to pray. If you can kneel, I think it'd be appropriate to kneel right now and to surrender yourself to God, to surrender and submit yourself to him, to assume that posture of surrender, to assume that posture of submission to him. He has to be more than just our savior. He must become our Lord. He's got to be more than just provider. He must become our Lord. He's got to be more than just the one who provides the miracles and, and the one who provides the, the loaves and the fishes and to, to meet our physical needs. He's got to be more than that. He has to be Lord um, over all. If he's not Lord um, uh, of all, he's not Lord at all. The challenge of the Spirit right now is to submit ourselves um, in obedience and submission to him, motivated um, by a love for him, uh, motivated by a love uh, that is based upon his sacrifice for us and God I serve you because I love you I'm going to be obedient to you because I love you I'm going to be obedient to you God because you've been so good to me I'm going to be obedient I'm going to submit myself to your word Now, if God is speaking something in your spirit and you need to respond in a certain way or you need to pray for someone right now or you need to do something right now that God is challenging you to do, I, I implore you to be obedient right now. Whatever the Holy Ghost is saying, whatever Jesus is telling you to do, would you be obedient to that? However, he is challenging you to respond. And if he is challenging you right now to get up from where you are, to move, to respond, to pray for somebody, I challenge you right now to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. And come on, his anointing is going to flow through you as you obey him. There, there's power and there's authority in obedience. And, and as you respond to the voice of the spirit, and you're going to feel that anointing begin to flow. You're going to discover that place of power and authority in the Holy Ghost. And as you begin to obey in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I, I need some prayer warriors to help me right now. I, I need somebody who knows how to travail in the Holy Ghost. And I, I know I, I need somebody who knows how to be an intercessor to begin to cry out and call upon the name of the Lord right now. Somebody who's full of the Holy Ghost. Would you begin to pray in the spirit right now? Would you begin to intercede in the spirit right now? Would you, would you begin to call on the name of the Lord on behalf of somebody else? Maybe there's somebody beside you, somebody in your family, somebody near you. They need you to obey the Holy Ghost right now. They need your prayers and your faith to help them break through, 
to respond to the spirit right now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Whatever you want me to do. Yes, God. I'll obey. Yes, God. I'll submit. Yes, God. I'll go. Yes, God. I'm willing. I'm going to obey. I've got to have that protection. I've got to have that authority and that power. Yes, God, to your will. Yes, God, to your word. Yes, God, to your purpose. Yes, God. Let there be a yes in your spirit right now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, whatever you're asking of me, my answer is yes. My response is yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. of God just sweeping into this place right now. There's just a beautiful presence of God. I, I feel him reciprocating that love. He, he's responding to your obedience right now. And I feel that love of God just feeling this house right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want my life to please you, God. I want my life to bring you glory. Oh, Somebody's starting to feel that authority right now in the Holy Ghost. It's evidence of that submission. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have someone today that's going to be obedient through baptism right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful for Summer. A couple of Wednesdays ago, she approached me. She, she has been a visitor from the P7 Club at Newark High School. I'm thank, I thank God for our P7 Clubs. God's moving in our P7 Clubs. Hallelujah. And she said that night, she made the decision that she wanted to be baptized in Jesus' name. 
And she's going to get baptized here in a moment. And I believe that God's going to bless her with the gift of the Holy Ghost as well. And I just want, I want our P7 Club members to know that, that you are making a difference. And I'm thankful for that. So Summer, go ahead and place your hand on your nose. And upon your, the profession of your faith and your willingness to be identified through water baptized, baptism. Hallelujah. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. It's okay. Worship. Worship in Jesus' name. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Can we just rejoice right now? Can we just celebrate and thank God for his goodness? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, yes. More than this world oh, you, to Jesus. me. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. No, no. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. Cause you are, you are my
to him right now can you do that just to express your love your appreciation to him right now thank you lord for your word thank you for speaking to us today thank you for challenging us today thank you for the promises you've given us lord we thank you for your blessing and your provision and your protection the authority the power that you have given us through your word today we thank you for it and we give you praise for it today jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a beautiful presence of God is here today. I want to thank you, CLC, for being the kind of church that would allow me to preach a challenging message and not walk out the back door but respond and allow God to speak to you and allow God to give you direction. And I'm, I'm praying that God would continue to speak to you in a very practical way as we leave today, that if, if, there's, if there's something that you need to do, if there's something that you need to stop doing because you're opening yourself up through disobedience to his word, and allowing that attack of the enemy and allowing things to happen that God's given us the ability and provision through his word to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and his tactics and his plan. I'm praying that God would speak to you in a very clear, practical way how to live out what we've heard today. What's happened here today and what you have heard will be of no good to us if it doesn't translate into our daily lives. When we get outside the four walls of this church, we have to live the commitments we've made in this place today. We have to live his word. Let his word be alive in you and live that word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to stand with me as we bring this service to a conclusion today. I want Brother Charlie and Sister Christy to come right up here to the, the front. They have been a very important, very valuable part of our congregation for a long time. Charlie being raised in this church, now being in ministry for over a decade of service and ministry youth pastor and hyphen pastor and discipleship pastor and both of them willing to do anything and everything for the kingdom of God to serve him to serve our church to serve our community and God has directed them and, and led them they feel that God is transitioning them they're going to be transitioning to uh, his brother's church in Dayton and we are going to be 
missing them. There's going to be a void in our church because they are so special and so important to our church. And I want our ministry team to, to gather around them right now. And we are, we're going to just pray for them today. And this won't be the last time we pray for them. We'll be praying for them in the coming days and, and weeks as they, they transition. I feel like God has given them direction and I've asked Brother Charlie to preach this Wednesday night, so we'll be hearing from him uh, Wednesday night. And Sister Christy, if she wants to say anything on Wednesday night, and uh, she's saying probably not. Uh, Brother Charlie will be preaching Wednesday night, and next Sunday will be their their last official Sunday here. But there will be some some times in the in the coming weeks and months where they will certainly. Uh, pop in from time to time and they will always be part of our CLC family that will never change something I've already discovered about this CLC family is that people have a way of making their way back here so but, uh, but, uh, they, they feel that, that pastoring is in their future and that this is a step uh, that God is leading them to take in that direction and uh, we're going to pray over them transition is is never easy there's challenges that are inherent in transition and so we're going to pray over them and for them for the wisdom of god for his blessing favor continued anointing upon their lives and their ministry would you just stretch your hand toward them right now as we lift them up in prayer lord we thank you god for brother charlie sister christy we thank you for their lives we thank you lord for the investment of their lives and their ministry in our church Hallelujah. Let's just rejoice right now and thank the Lord for hearing our prayer, answering our prayer. We thank you for it, Jesus. We give you praise today, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to go in faith and in power and authority today. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that obedience is going to, to bring provision and protection, anointing, power, authority into your life and your family.